But welcome to the Depop Seller Podcast with me, Josh Up, and today I'm just going to be talking about photos, I'll be talking about my Depop in recent weeks, and as well, at the end, I'm going to be answering your questions, which you left me over on my Instagram, which, if you don't already know what that is, is in the description. Nice little plug I got in there. But uh, what I've, kind of, I've, had, I've come to a lot of conclusions about photos recently in my Depop. Like, I'm moving away from that backdrop which I use, which is a very bold move. Kind of goes against pretty much everything I've, like, said up until this point about having a theme for your shop. I'm kind of moving away from that because I feel like the the backdrop that I have downstairs, which if you haven't seen that before, I'll throw up a little photo of it. It kind of limits me to how I can take my photos in a way where it is, like, a set shape. I can't really get more of my body in, if you know what I mean. Like for some of the recent photos I've been taking on my Depop, I'll throw up a photo. I've got a lot more of kind of me in it in a way, but I think that really helps where you can see the whole fit of the item compared to before when with like the photos, as you can see here, you kind of can't really see the whole fit of the item. Like it kind of gets cropped out just where like you just wear the borders, like limiting the size of the photo I could take. Where obviously for Depop, you gotta have a square photo and the board was a certain width. I couldn't go far enough back to be able to actually get the whole of me in it. And I think that was one of the things that recently has really kind of not killed my sales, but I would say that is one of the contributing like factors in a way to a reason why my sales might not be as good in a way, especially for like the lower, quality items if you want to call them that like i don't think they're lower quality but for the less desirable items say it's not doing them any favors to help the chance of them selling so i'm moving outside now moving into the bigger photos it's a bit of a bold move moving into like the newer style photos mainly because it's got your face in it which really is kind of a stupid concept in a way because I do this like I couldn't get any more public do you know what I mean but uh, so me thinking about having my face in a Depop photo is kind of stupid like that was the whole kind of original reason why I didn't want to do it in a way but I think that was partially where that well that, that kind of mindset though was more when I was just doing Depop and not really doing YouTube in a way but now, arguably, it might even help me because some of you who watch this or people who have maybe just watched one of my videos or two of my videos just here and there or have just seen my video come up, they see me come up on Depop as well. It's another click and I don't really know how the whole kind of Depop algorithm works in a way, but if a click on your item maybe helps it getting pushed, it's another factor and another reason why I'm not just go outside and ditch everything I've said about before about having a theme for my Depop and about having like the dartboard theme and start moving outside and taking like the better photos. And as well, I think them photos are just better as well as a total in a way because you can see the whole fit. Like what I like to think about with my Depop is say I was to buy something or you can do this with yourself. Say you were to buy something or I was to buy something, put yourself in the, or for this example, I'll, put, I'll talk about myself. For this, for put yourself in the position in like, say you're looking at your shop, put yourself in the buyer's perspective in a way. Say you're looking at your shop as a potential buyer, would you buy from yourself? If the answer is no, think about why and kind of adapt on that. I think that's the kind of, the way I've gone about Depop the whole way through in a way. Because, not going to lie, I've never, I've been clueless the whole way through, to be honest. Like, it's all kind of been like a learning process thing. I only really started doing Depop seriously in December. All my kind of learning blocks, in a way, if you want to call them that, that's not the right saying. There's another saying to do with learning blocks, though, in it. Saying blocks. But whatever, all my kind of like learning process has been with that kind of mindset, has been partially as well by watching some videos and kind of looking at top sellers and kind of thinking, how do the top sellers do it? Like, what do the top sellers' accounts look like? What photos are they taking? What descriptions have they got? What are they doing that I'm not to make me better? I think that is the kind of best way to improve your Depop if 
you're kind of struggling in a way with it in a way if you want to say struggling or if you're just in the early stages and you don't really know what to do go look at the bigger shops and kind of see what they're doing and try and apply that to your shop and then you'll see I think a lot more success just where obviously you're kind of taking you take it's like looking at Ronaldo what skills does Ronaldo do how does Ronaldo do it copy Ronaldo you could be as good as Ronaldo. It's that kind of mindset in a way, do you know what I mean? So that's what I've kind of applied to my photos recently and kind of my whole account. Like, originally, especially like this photo I took from Campervan Vintage, like heavily kind of inspired from Campervan Vintage, which I did speak about in the week vlog. That is pretty much one of the reasons why I did take that photo. And look, it worked. I, I don't know... Yeah, the oh, well, you're, that's a little sneak preview for you for the, the week vlog. I sold that Ralph Lauren t-shirt or the rugby polo, whatever you want to call it already. And I'm going to massively put that down to the style of photo. It could partially be where it is just like a better item, do you know what I mean? Like where the item is good. But I'm going to put it down to the photos because it's the only new thing that I've kind of done to it in a way. Like I've had other items that I've got recently like this Cortez jumper. Like I think this is the craze. Like I think this is really nice. But I don't think the photos have done it justice. But I think if I would have done the better photos like I did with the Ralph Lauren item, I could have possibly have already have sold this or sold it a long old time ago. Do you know what I mean? So that is my kind of brain spill about photos recently and kind of stepping away from my theme for my Depop in a way and stepping more towards just kind of what sells in a way rather than going I'm having a theme I need a theme the only thing that does kind of turn me over now for is because my business cards which if you haven't seen these before are heavily themed towards the dartboard and the whole chipboard thing I don't think they would be as heavily themed towards it if they didn't have the little dartboard in the corner but I'm still going to keep the dartboard and the chipboard for the flat laid photos partially because I haven't come up with an idea yet on how to betterly display them items so they're still kind of relevant but I think these are going to be out the window very soon but I've still got a good chunk of them to get through before I can order any more. Saying that though, say, I feel like I've actually kind of came that, that was full before so I'm halfway through, I'm halfway there. But if I'm changing my if I'm changing my theme for my shop up now, only being halfway there is no good. I need to be the whole way there. Do you know what I mean? But that is my kind of that is actually my kind of brain spill over in a way about photos. But recently as well, I don't know if if you watch the week vlog, I've had some massive issues in trying to source packaging materials. You could like. I did not think it would be this hard to buy a box, like a cardboard box. You think that's a simple task. It's the hardest thing I've done in recent times. I went to five different shops to try and buy a cardboard box. Uh, let me just see if my timer is actually going to go off because I've already filmed this before and my timer didn't go off. So I had to, re re I had to scrap this all and do it again. But I've literally tried so hard recently to buy a cardboard box. Like you would not think it was this hard to buy a box like us. It's like I could have bought a box easy, but of a box at a certain dimension is so challenging. If you went to a supermarket or a takeaway place or something like that, they'd probably give you a hundred boxes for free. They'd probably even pay you to take the boxes away. But to go and buy one, is an impossible task and as well that was that timer i was talking about but and as well the packaging materials are so expensive like i bought these like jiffy bag things which i hoped were going to fit all of them 15 sweatshirts and they didn't but i bought two of these and it was like eight pounds or something like that from wh smiths they weren't from wh smiths there was a post office in wh smiths but eight wh smiths at the end of the day in it but eight pound for two of these which i thought was just extortionate especially when you can get i think a hundred of these is five pounds and you're paying eight pound for two of them it was just a joke and as well i'm not even gonna be able to use these now because they don't fit all of the sweatshirts in and as well i don't think i would have been able to use them anyway wear hermes as like a 
set limit in a way for the size of box that you can actually send your items in. That wouldn't have been good enough. I think this would have come up as too big, which also I think is a bit of a joke as well that you have a set size. Like, obviously I understand that you could send like a car size box for whatever price, but one set size box isn't kind of, not acceptable, but one set size box for all parcels isn't too realistic. You could say go Royal Mail, but Royal Mail gets too pricey, especially if you're sending stuff tracked and stuff like that. It just gets insane. Like, I really don't like Royal Mail anymore. I'm not saying I've had any negative experiences with them, but for the amount of money you're paying for it compared to Hermes is extortionate. But the only thing is, they probably will do that bigger box. Like, they probably will send that bigger parcel. But for how much, I dread to think. I know I went in there, this must have been months ago now. When I went in there, there was literally a girl sending probably a box the size of this. I think she was getting like track shipping and stuff like that on it though, which still doesn't matter. But it was 20 pounds to send a box that size, 20 pounds for a box like this. That Them 15 sweatshirts that I sent the other day, got them tracked. I think I got cover on them as well. Uh, I got a couple of other things as well. And that was eight pounds and she paid 20 pounds to send a little box like that out. When I heard, when I heard the woman say, I was like 20 pounds, car, like in the queue. Like, but uh, yeah, I think that is, all my, that is all my postage dilemmas I've had this week. It's been a stress though recently to try and get to the post office, trying to juggle what times to go. Do I go first thing in the morning, have to get up earlier, or do I go later on and have to rush after college or drive, have to drive past the postal shop to drive back again. But really, they're not really too much stresses in the world. Like they are probably the most insignificant stresses going. But I think that is pretty much all my, all my rant over about Depop recently in the last week and kind of everything related to Depop. So let's get onto the Q and A. A couple of you sent me over questions over on uh, Instagram, as I said, about anything I said. As well, if you've got any more questions for next episode, if you've watched this far, if you've watched this far, big up to you, because I don't know how you just watched through that, because that was a proper waffly rant. But if you have watched this far, if you've got any questions for next week, drop them down in the comments. I'll answer them in next week's podcast. I also mention it in my week vlog about dropping them in the comments. So if you either drop them in the comments of that video or this video, I'll answer them in next week's podcast. Or if you drop them over on my Instagram, there'll be a poll probably up Sunday. Yeah, well, the day after this will come out. Oh, up about the questions again, like these ones are, if that makes sense. But let's get into the questions that people asked me. The first question was, why create content? I assume you're saying about Depop, like, oh, I assume you're saying about YouTube. I think the reason I kind of created content in a way for YouTube is because I've kind of always liked making video and I've kind of always had like a, a passion in a way, if you want to call it a passion, for creating video. Like when I was a lot younger, I think it was probably like when I was like eight and stuff like that. I think it was like eight to 12. I used to make little like stop motion videos, which if you don't know what they are, they're like the, you've probably definitely seen them. The little videos online of the little Lego men walking about and it makes it look like they're all like real life. When I was like eight to 12, I used to make them. And then I think when I was 15 to, for, for, for three years, I think it was probably from 12 to 15, I made YouTube videos as well on another channel, which probably no one watching this video now watched because no one watched them in general. But I literally made, oh God, I've got something in my eye, I've got like grit in my eye. God, that well, that well hurt, but... Uh, yeah, I used to make videos for like three years about just gaming videos. Like I had an Elgato, which you're kind of lucky I don't have that Elgato anymore because you would have been put through a lot of gaming content by now or a separate gaming channel, which is either you're probably either happy that you don't have that or disappointed. I'm going to go with more of happy because it would have been all career mode content, which does get a little bit boring, but that is pretty much the only game I ever play. But I literally made content for three years 
I think it was two years for the gaming videos and they were consistent gaming videos as well. Like I'd upload at least one a week, if not more. Sometimes I'd probably upload four, just slap them all on one day. Then I wouldn't go, I'd go a week without posting. But then I literally, for then for the last two years, they were the first two years and then for the last year I made videos, I did like, it pretty much did the week vlogs really, but I did them in another, I did them about scootering pretty much. I used to ride a scooter when I was like 15. I think it was, it was 14 or 15. It might have been like 14 into 15. I used to ride a scooter and literally from week one of me riding till the end, I think it was like 37 or 34 episodes we got to. It was me just, it was just the week vlog like that I do at the moment just about scootering pretty much and I did that that is kind of the whole reason why I've started doing the week vlog as well because I liked making them back then so I thought why not bring it back it wasn't a successful content concept then it might be now which is kind of become a successful concept it's it's, it's doing all right I quite like making them to be honest that is one of the biggest reasons why I do the week vlogs because I like to look back on them like the way I like to look back on the old scootering videos from back then they're nice to look back on in a couple of months even in a couple of weeks like I know I went back and watched like week two of the uh, week vlog and it was like I think that was only what six weeks ago now and it was like Carl like it was it's weird to see how things were at the time do you know what I mean especially when especially when them videos will become like years old it would be interesting to see how they kind of what everything was like and kind of my opinions on things back then do you know what i mean but that is pretty much the reason why i create content and as well i like making videos like i'm not like i feel like not not to throw shots but i feel like some people make videos because they want to they want to be a youtuber do you know what i mean I actually like making video, like I actually like the editing process, do you know what I mean? Like I actually enjoy video editing, video filming, I enjoy the whole process, I don't just like the thought of being a YouTuber, don't get me wrong, I like that thought as well, but I do actually like the other side to it as well, like I've always kind of, as I said, I've always kind of had that passion throughout life in a way, if you want to say that. Uh, for making videos and stuff like that and that's kind of the reason why I create content now and why I'm gonna hopefully continue to create content in the future hopefully continue to make content for you on this channel and yeah that is pretty much that answer I just like making videos pretty much I just actually like the process of editing that is pretty much the whole reason why I create content in the short way round. I pretty much, I went the longest way round to answer that question, but in the short, I just like editing videos pretty much. But the next question is, favourite tune at the moment? Now my time has finished going off, but the next question was, favourite tune at the moment? To be honest, I don't really listen to too, too much music. The only time I'd say I really listen to music is either in the car or if I'm just throwing it on and I'm like actually doing something. Even then I don't really tend to listen to music. The only time I really do listen to music is primarily in the car. But my my songs that are on my on repeat on Spotify at the moment are, if I can find it. But I'll tell you, I'll tell you about my podcast. The, the recent, I'm only listening to podcasts at the moment just purely for the fact of I enjoy listening to that. I feel like not more intellectual, but I feel like there's, there's more value you get out of listening to a podcast rather than listening to music, even if it's just maybe someone's perspective on something. Cause I find it interesting to hear people talk about random things in a way. But my top music that I've listened to recently, Kai, it's all been shuffled around. Uh, my top song in recent times is a song called Boozy by Zero and Window Kid. It's quite a tune. I think it's well good. I put it on my story recently on Instagram if you see that. Uh, second is Suicide Boys by, and it's called All Though, and what, and it's called what? Or, and To Those I Love. It's pretty much their like top song. I really like that. My third song is Little Peep and it's Skyscrapers. I listen to a vi wide variety of music. Think You've gone from that boozy, which if you listen to it, you'll see it is very different to like little people and that it's like eating like house music in a way. Then you've got Dave, Titanium, 
Uh, Bad Boy Chiller Crew, Don't Worry About Me, that's a tune. Uh, ABG by Quavo Rondo. RD, 6am in Brighton. You can't not like that song, especially at the moment. It's being played all the time. Biggie, Give Me The Loot, Ready To Die. And a lot of other Suicide Boys, Bad Boy Chiller Crew, Polo G. They're the kind of music I really listen to. There's a French The Kid song on there, a couple more Suicide Boys songs. I kind of listen to a lot of music, to be fair. I've got a weird selection of music. Like, I literally will listen to, if you shuffle my playlist, it will go reggae, hard, like, heavy metal, Suicide Boys, whatever, like, category they fall under, like, emo rap, if you want to call it that. That's probably what will come up if you Google it. Uh, then you get, like, RD, you get Band OK. You'll literally go through every genre of music. I kind of into a little bit of everything. But as I said, I don't really tend to listen to music. I'm more into podcasts, especially the ones that I like listening to at the moment. I really like my favourite podcast by far is, I don't know what he calls it now, Joey's Joint, like Joey Diaz, if you know who he is. He's an American comedian who's quite good pals with Joe Rogan. He has his own podcast and it's really interesting just purely for the fact of what I said about the reason I like podcasts. It gives you a, like a, it's an interest, interesting perspective on life in a way and the way he thinks and the kind of journey he's taken to get to where he is and the kind of trials and tribulations in a way if you want to call it that of what it's taken him to get to where he's at I just find it interesting to hear what he's got to say in a way and I like the way he says it there's probably the best one I've listened to recently though is the Jackmate podcast and it's the Jabuddy G episode that was one of probably one of the episodes in recent times that's actually made me like laugh, laugh. Do you know what I mean? Like it was funny. I think it's just your buddy. Like he is funny. He's not actually called your buddy. What's his name? Asmir. I don't know. I don't know how to say it. But he is well funny. Like him in general. Like he's had an interesting life as well. Hearing about his upbringing and kind of what's taken him. Like what route is he taken to get to where he's at? Was well interesting. Like he was saying about little spoiler alert he was saying about he used to work at a call center and he used to do like the jabuddy voice down the phone to people like it's interesting to hear like people's stories and kind of but i think that would have played a significant role in the jabuddy character in a way and the kind of development of the character so stuff like that i just find it quite interesting that is the kind of reason i like podcasts and that is the reason i really like that podcast but our next question is biggest inspiration it depends what kind of context you're implying that to, because I think uh, there's lots of different inspirations for lots of different things. But if you're going to apply that to the context of my inspiration for YouTube per se, I would say not. Insp I say my inspiration in a way is probably as basic as it is Casey Neistat. Casey Neistat, not growing up, but when he was doing the daily vlogs, they work. I'd watch them every day. I'd always be like, I want to make something like that. Like that was the kind of I would say not the thing that kind of kick-started the thing for me to create videos, but it was definitely a huge factor in the reason I wanted to make content in a way, or kind of planted the seed in a way for me to create content. But I'd say maybe my biggest YouTube inspiration, I'm not going to say inspiration, but one of the reasons why I started making this channel was I used to watch Retro Jamie when he was literally just starting out in the first lockdown. Like I probably watched his first couple videos about doing the unboxings and that. And that kind of, not kickstart, that was probably one of the reasons as well. That was the biggest reason I ordered that first bail, which was the kind of, which is I think is actually the biggest uh, video on my channel. That was the reason I ordered that bail is because I see him order it that was probably a lot that was probably the reason a lot of people ordered it because they see him unbox it but watching Retro Jamie in a way and then kind of starting getting into Depop it kind of not opened my eyes to the fact of that I could make videos about Depop but opened my eyes for lack of a better word or lack of a better phrase to me being able to actually make content about Depop and actually make content again. Like I knew I wanted to make content again, but I didn't know what I wanted to make it about. But watching Retro Jamie and kind of seeing that you can do it about Depop and stuff like that, and there is like, like an audience for that, kind of 
inspired me per se to start making YouTube videos again and start making this channel and like, well, actually make this channel in the first place. But, so you could say Retro Jamie in the sense of YouTube, but for video content as a whole, I would put it down to Casey Nice that pretty much. But, uh, oh, the next one comes in from, uh, it's as funny as it is, it says, learn how to say my name yet. Not gonna lie, I did have it up earlier. Oh, why ain't it coming out now? Res I did, I've Googled it on my phone. I actually Googled it on my phone, how to say it earlier. Resurrect. Resurrect, yeah, Resurrect's vintage. I do know how to say it now. It's only taken me, what, probably about two months and a Google search, but I don't know how to, I now know how to say it. I did not think that was how you spelt Resurrect. I don't even know how I thought you spelt Resurrect, but that was not it. But uh, our last question reads, where do you see yourself in a few years time? To be honest, that is like, I think there's very many different kind of, not outlets that I could see myself in, but there's many different roads that I could potentially go down. I think though, no matter where I am in a few years time, my kind of like current aim in a way is to still be doing some form of like video content or video editing of some sort. Anything, something to do with video is where I see myself in a few years. But in what role, to be honest, who knows? Ideally, it would be making videos for all yous and making videos on YouTube, making or just making videos in general for whatever platform is trending at the time in a way. But that is the kind of, that is where I'd like to be in a few years, but how, not how realistic that is, but how plausible in a way per se, like, I don't know how to say it, but how, how plausible in a way that is, who knows. In a dream world, in a few years, I'd like to see myself still sat here making videos for you and making videos for YouTube, but more, not realistically, but I think not more, it's not more realistically, but more likely I'd say is I'd be editing for someone, either editing freelance or editing for a company or like a film studio or something like that. That is kind of where I'd see myself in a couple of years. Though that is where I hope to see myself in a couple of years. But I think it is literally just in film in some way, ideally YouTube more likely editing and freelancing, but in video editing nonetheless. Hopefully the dream would be doing YouTube, doing Depop full time, and that would be it. Like that would be the, that is where I'd like to be in a few years, but who knows how that's gonna pan out. But that is all of our questions from the Q&A. As I've already said, if you've got any more, tomorrow there'll be a poll on my Instagram. Drop them in the comments, I'll answer them or drop them in the comments of the week vlog and I'll also get to them. But I think that is where I'm gonna wrap this podcast up. If you've watched this far, drop me a comment saying you've dropped this, like that you've watched this far. Drop me a little clover, like a clover emoji, just to let me know, to, so no one else knows. But if you have watched this far, thank you very much for watching this far. Big up to you. I don't know how you've made it this far because that was a little bit wishy-washy because I feel like it, it's, I'm still trying to find my footing in a way with doing this podcast. It's going to be a bit of a learning curve. The first couple of episodes are going to be a little bit all over the place, but we'll get there. I think we'll get there eventually, especially as well. I think if we get a couple of guests on, they'll be a little bit more structured in a way and a little bit more straightforward, if you know what I mean. But that is where I'm going to wrap it up. I do hope you enjoyed. Big up to you for watching this far. Drop me a clover to let me know you have dropped this far. I hope to see you in the next one. If you haven't already subscribed, what are you scanning on? What are you doing? You're absolutely insane. But hopefully I'll see you in Monday's week vlog or I'll see you in the next podcast.